Welcome to uh, Morning Devotions. I'm in my office again and um, so glad that you guys, you have uh, tuned in to listen and to um, get inspired by the Word of God. And that's really my prayer for you is that this morning that you will get some nugget that you can, that will take you through the day, or if it's in the afternoon or evening, that you will get some nugget that will take you into the next day. And as we have been doing, I've been looking at some of the uh, lesser known characters of the Bible, not the superstars, but others. And uh, yesterday we had uh, Paul, who is one of the superstars, the Apostle Paul, and Barnabas and Mark. Paul's also known as Saul, too. And um, we're going to look at uh, not Mark, but we're going to look at Saul and Barnabas. And specifically, I want to point something out about Barnabas and who he was and how he um, operated and the gift that he had and something that we're called to do, too. We're going to go to Acts 9 starting at verse 26. When he came to Jerusalem, he tried to join, he being Saul or Paul, the disciples. But they were all afraid of him, not believing that he really was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles. He told them how Saul on his journey had seen the Lord, and the Lord had spoken to him, and how in Damascus he had preached fearlessly in the name of Jesus. So Saul stayed with them and moved about freely in Jerusalem, speaking boldly in the name of the Lord. He talked and debated with the Hellenistic Jews, but they tried to kill him. When the believers learned of this, they took him down to Caesarea and sent him off to Tarsus. I'm going to read one more verse. That was chapter 9. We go to chapter 11. Paul has been in Tarsus for a while. And this happens. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul. And when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. So for a whole year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church and taught great numbers of people. The disciples were first called Christians at Antioch. Well, Barnabas. His nickname, is that's actually his nickname, Barnabas. So if you call someone Barney because their name is Barnabas, it's actually a nickname of a nickname. But that's not why I'm talking about Barnabas. I'm talking about Barnabas because of what that nickname means. It means son of encouragement or encourager. And Barnabas got that name for good reason. Because he was one of those individuals, and we've all known them, that have just has the gift of encouragement, that they see people and they bring out the very best in people, and that they're able to help and support people and bring them in law, along in such a way that all of their God-given gifts and abilities come to the fore. They're the type of people that when you're around them, you want to be your very best. And the very best encouragers are the ones who make you want to be your very best, not for them, but for the Lord. And that's exactly what Barnabas was. And that's what Barnabas did for Saul. First, when Saul came to Jerusalem and everyone was afraid of them, Barnabas was willing to be bold and go and talk with Saul, and he was willing to be bold and bring Saul to the apostles. And therefore, Saul was such an effective instrument of the Holy Spirit that his enemies tried to kill him. And then they sent him to Tarsus to protect him. But once Barnabas had gone to Antioch, the second kind of great center of the church, he went and picked up Saul and brought him and again encouraged him. And even though in many ways Barnabas was the senior partner, he had known Jesus longer than Saul or Paul, he stepped in the background and pushed Paul forward so that Paul could use his gifts, his skill, his theological understanding, his gifts of speaking. And because of that, 
we have the mission to the Gentiles. Actually, it's through the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, we have the mission to the Gentiles. But it's Barnabas and using his gifts that equipped Saul and Paul to use his gifts. So this is why I want to ask you two things. What are those gifts you need to use today? Whether it's encouragement or service or, or wisdom or teaching, what are they that you need to use today? Well, pray to God and ask God to use them. And secondly, you might not have the gift of encouragement, but that doesn't mean you can't be an encourager. I would encourage you to encourage, I would encourage you, I would encourage you to encourage someone else. Lift someone else up today, whether it's a child or a spouse or a neighbor or a friend or someone on staff here at church. Give them a call. Give them a smile. Tell them they're doing a good job. But encourage them to be the best they can be. Let's pray. Lord God, we, uh, we ask that you would enliven our gifts today, that your Holy Spirit would enliven them. We also ask that we would show your love to someone by encouraging them in their gifts. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, stay hope-filled. Or I should say, be hope-filled. Stay strong, and God bless.